conventional ocular delivery systems. First, there is topical liquid solution eye drops. These topical liquid solution eye drops have advantages like topical eye drops are the most convenient, prompt, safe, and non-invasive. Their limitation include drug resistance time and bioavailability, problem of ocular permeability. To manage the problem, we use viscosity enhancing agent as hydroxypropyl methicillulose, cyclodextrin that act as complexing agent that carry the hydrophobic drug and enhance its permeability through the aqueous environment. Also, we can use permeability enhancer as benzalkonium chloride and polyoxyethylene glycol ethers. However, Problems associ associated with viscosity enhancing agent and cyclodextrin like precorneal loss and toxicity that associated with the permeability enhancer lead to the development of other formulations like emulsion, ointment, suspension, and nanotechnology. Second, there is emulsion. The emulsion, which is a dispersion of oil phase in aqueous continuous phase, is most commonly used in pharmaceutical ophthalmic preparation. It is preferred over water in oil preparation because it is less irritant to the eye. Advantages These preparations are important to increase precorneal residence time, drug corneal permeation, and providing sustained drug release, thus improving bioavailability. Mucoadhesive agent can be used as chitosan and HPMC to improve the residence time of active ingredient. Example, refresh Endura. Also, ophthalmic preparations may be suspension. The suspension is a dispersion of finally divided solid active drug ingredient in a liquid medium using a suspending agent. The suspension is important in ophthalmic preparation because it improves the drug contact time, prolongs the duration of action because the smaller particle of suspension can replenish the absorbed drug while larger particle help to prolong the drug action by retaining the particle in the precorneal pocket. Example, Topradex, which is composed of the antibiotic Topramycin and the steroid Dexamethasone. Ointment. Ophthalmic ointment consists of active drug incorporated in a semi-solid hydrocarbon base that should have adequate compatibility. Incorporation of the drug in an ophthalmic ointment is important for improving the bioavailability of the drug and providing sustained drug release. Novel ocular drug delivery systems, nanoparticles, nanosuspensions, liposomes, dendrimers, microneedles, nanomycels, in situ gelling systems, contact lens, and implants. Pharmaceutical requirements. First, sterility and preservation. Although it is preferable to sterilize ophthalmics in their final containers by autoclaving at 121 Celsius degree for 15 minutes, this method sometimes is precluded by thermal instability of the formulation. As an alternative, Bacteria filters may be used. One advantage of filtration is the retention of all particulate matter, microbial dust or fiber. However, it is not as efficient as autoclave. This is the autoclave, which is sterilization method by heat under pressure, or sorry, steam under pressure. This is the bacteria filter. 
To maintain a sterility during use, antimicrobial preservatives generally are included in ophthalmic formulations. An exception is for preparation to be used during surgery or in the treatment of traumatized eyes because some preservatives irritate the eye. These preservative-free preparations are packaged in single-use containers. During the pre-formulation studies, antimicrobial preservatives must demonstrate stability, chemical and physical compatibility with other formulation and packaging components, and effectiveness at the concentration employed. Among the antimicrobial preservatives used in ophthalmic solutions and suspensions and their effective concentration are benzyl conium chloride 0.004% to 0.01%, chlorobutanol 0.5%, vinyl mercuric acetate 0.004% and vinyl mercuric nitrate 0.004%. Chlorobutanol has limitation because it cannot be autoclaved because it decomposes even in a moderate heat to yield hydrochloric acid. This decomposition or degradation renders a product susceptible to microbial growth because in this case, we will lose the antimicrobial effect of the preservative and could alter its pH because uh, the uh, result of the uh, production of the hydrochloric acid effect on the pH of the product and thereby affect on the stability and physiological activity of the therapeutic ingredient. In concentration tolerated by the eye, all of the aforementioned preservative agents are ineffective against some strains of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which can invade and abrade cornea and cause ulceration and even blindness. To, uh, to manage the problem, Preservative mixtures of benzyl conium chloride 0.01% and either polymyxine B sulfate or disodium ethylene diamine tetraacetate in certain concentration are effective against most strain of pseudomonas. The other requirements of Ophthalmic preparation is isotonicity value. Body fluids, including blood and tears, have an osmotic pressure corresponding to that of 0.9% solution of sodium chloride. Thus, 0.9% sodium chloride solution is said to be isosmotic or having an osmotic pressure equal to that of physiological fluids. The terms isotonic meaning equal tone is commonly used interchangeably with isosmotic, although it is correctly used only with reference to a specific body fluid, whereas isosmotic is a physicochemical term comparing the osmotic pressure of two liquids that may or may not be physiological fluids. Solutions with a lower osmotic pressure than body fluid or uh, of, of 0.9% sodium chloride solution are commonly called hypotonic, whereas solutions having a greater osmotic pressure are termed hypertonic. This figure represents the osmo osmosis that occur in body fluid. Here is the semi-permeable membrane and water will move in the following direction. In practice, the isotonicity limits of an ophthalmic solution in terms of sodium chloride or its osmotic equivalent may range from 0.9% to 2% without marked discomfort to the eye. The calculations necessary to prepare isosmotic solution may be made in terms of data relating to the colligative properties of the solutions, like osmotic pressure. The other colligative properties of solutions, namely vapor pressure, 
boiling point and the freezing point depend on the number of particles in solution. The calculations needed to prepare isotonic solution for an electrolyte are different from that of non-electrolyte. For example, boric acid is a non-electrolyte. The amount of it needed to prepare isotonic solution can be determined as the following. 61.8 gram is the molecular weight of boric acid. Therefore, 61.8 gram of boric acid in 1000 gram of water result in a freezing point reached to about minus 1.86. So, how much gram of this material we need to get 0.52 Celsius degree below than that of the freezing point of water? That means it is minus 0.52. يعني هي نسبة تناسب 61 غرام من البوريك أسيد في 1000 غرام من الماء يؤدي إلى فريزنج بوينت أقل من الفريزنج بوينت للماء بحوالي 1.86. فكم نحتاج من هذه المادة لكي نحصل على مينس 0.52 اللي هي تمثل الفريزنج بوينت مال لاكريمال فلود أو بادي فلود x equal to 17.3 gram this is the amount of boric acid that is required to get isotonic solution Whereas sodium chloride, which is an electrolyte, unlike boric acid, it has a dissociation factor of 1.8. Therefore, the amount needed to prepare isotonic solution is molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.5 gram. This 58.5 gram in 1000 gram of water result in a depletion of the freezing point below than that of water by about 1.86. So, how much we need to get 0.52, which is the freezing point of the lacrimal fluid? You should keep in your mind that 1.8, which is the dissociation factor, should be multiplied in this uh, equation by 1.86. 1.8 is the dissociation factor of sodium chloride. Dissociation factor of sodium chloride come from the fact that sodium chloride is an electrolyte. It is 80% dissociate. That means there is 80% particles dissociate to Na ion and Cl ion and 20% particles that are not dissociated. Therefore, the total number of particles will be 80% sodium ion, 80% chloride ion, and 20%, sorry, 80 particle of sodium ion, 80 particle of chloride ion, and 20 particle of the undissociated molecule of sodium chloride. So the total number will be 80 plus 80 plus 20, that result in 180 particles of sodium chloride. Therefore, the dissociation factor will be 180 divided by 100 and we will get 1.8. As I explained to you in the previous year in pharmaceutical calculation, we do not need to come in details because you take all of this information in the previous year. Therefore, we need about 9.09 gram of sodium chloride in order to get isotonic solution. To calculate sodium chloride equivalent to one gram of the substance, which is E value, also you, uh, uh, you have learned this in the previous year, in pharmaceutical calculation, how to calculate E value from the following equation. 
molecular weight of sodium chloride divided by the dissociation factor of, of sodium chloride multiplied by the dissociation factor of the sod of the substance and divided by molecular weight of that substance to get sodium chloride equivalent. For example, the amount of sodium chloride required to prepare isotonic solution for the following example is represented by this uh, method. Atropine sulfate, 1%, sodium chloride, sufficient quantity to get isotonicity, and the sterile purified water add up to 30 milliliter. So, amount of sodium chloride that is required to get isotonic solution, if there is no atropine sulfate, will be equal to about 0.27 gram of sodium chloride. That means we should multiply 30 milliliter by 0.9%. But we have uh, atropine sulfate in this example, which is about 0.3 gram. And uh, its uh, isotonicity should be taken in consideration. The sodium chloride equivalent of atropine sulfate is 0.12, according to the above equation. Thus, its contribution is calculated as follows. 0.12 multiplied by 0.3 gram equal to 0.036 gram. Thus, 0.27 minus 0.036 equal to 0.23 gram of sodium chloride required.